The province of Ifugao was known for its great system of irrigated rice terraces that is world-renowned and was developed with a simple technology. So here are some of the remarkable artworks that originated from the province of Ifugao. Rice terraces were carved into the mountains of Banao Ifugao in the Philippines by the ancestors of the indigenous people. It is occasionally called the Eighth Wonder of the World. It was built with minimal equipment largely by hand. It is located approximately 1,500 meters or 4,900 feet above sea level. Are fed by an ancient irrigation system from the rainforest above the terraces. In Cordillera Mountains, Nipa huts are the traditional homes of Ifugao tribe. However, most of the huts are now utilized for tourist accommodation and for sponsorship. The huts are simple to look at, but are ingeniously designed for an Ifugao's daily life. It is adorned with lots of animal skulls and skeletons, which are earned from hunting or from their previous rituals. Some say that those are a sign of prominence in the earlier times. The hat stands on stilts and makes up a wide open area under the main house, which is the ground floor. The wide area is used for multi-purposes such as cooking big meals, doing household chores, and for keeping animals, usually native pigs, for ritual offerings. The indoor house or the main house area contains a kitchen for small meals and boiling water. There's also storage and walls for keeping weapons, kitchen utensils, sleeping materials. It also has dining and sleeping area in the middle of the house. Before sleeping, they detach the wooden staircase and hang them on the wall for safety purposes and to keep the pest and rats away from their home. Stone repropping is a permanent layer of durable stones free from crack and other structural defects that protects the soil surface against erosion and scar in areas of concentrated flow. These stones are manually arranged according to its size and soil acts as binder. These stones were built by Filipino ancestors, particularly of Ifugao descent, and built with minimal equipment largely by the use of their hands that were manually arranged according to its size. These sturdy stone wall terraces have made it possible for the terraces to last for a long time and in order to maintain this, the farmers immediately repair it whenever there are damages if they have the means to restore it. Farmers in Ifugao always hope that the stone walls will still remain because it serves as the foundation of the paddies. consists of narrative chants traditionally performed with the Ifugao community, which is well known for its rice terraces, expanding over the highlands of the northern island of the Philippines archipelago. It is practiced during the rice sowing season, at harvest time, and during funeral wakes and rituals. Panda, Adama. native dance or as the Ifugaos call it Tayo or Tajo. It is the Ifugao ancestors way of dancing which is still practiced up to the present generation. In the past it is performed at weddings, planting and harvest rituals, funerals and rites of passage. Now it is usually performed during festivals. It reflects the values and aspiration, civility, and spirituality of the Ifugaos. 
Bulul, also known as Bulul or Tinagtago. It is a carved wooden figure used to guard the rice crop by the Ifugao people of Northern Luzon. The sculptures are highly stylish representations of ancestors and are thought to gain power and wealth from the presence of the ancestral spirit. It is used in ceremonies associated with rice production and with healing. Creation of a bulul involves Alwen bulul ritual by a priest to ensure that the statue gains power. The bulul is treated with care and respect to avoid the risk of spirits of the ancestors bringing sickness. Bulul is important to Ifugaos because they believe they can protect and multiply the rice and help make the harvest abundant. Hagabi is a lounging bench that is made entirely of a single tree trunk with a highly stylized carving of animal heads on both ends. It is perhaps the most prestigious and most expensive ritual object and piece of a carved craftsmanship due to the energy and cost involved in the required rights to produce it, entailing the participation of the entire community. It serves as the most important costume object during the validation of a member of the community as a Katangyan, the elite status, among the Tuali Ipugao and Kiangan, Hongduan, Lagawi, and parts of Manawi. Tribal wars were a thing in the olden days where the Ifugao people were known as headhunters. So, they became artistic and created their own weapons. They practiced blacksmithing, were in those metals, were forged on fire, and flattened and formed into a knife by a stone hammer. It comes in different forms such as spears, head-taking axes, and bola machete. Not only these knives were used as weapons but for hunting as well as a utility tool. They are multi-purpose and so it is still widely used in Ifugao as a household tool in farming and carving also. Almost all household in Ifugao has these knives because of its super sharp blade. Artisans in Ifugao also make jewelry, particularly necklaces, which they call Lingling-O and Dinomok. It is present for centuries since the Metal Age of the Philippines, from 500 to 1000 AD, according to narstudio.com. These necklaces symbolize fertility, virility, and bring good luck. Some of these are empowered before wearing it and is believed that there are anitas within them. It is a round figure and has a slit in the middle. The negative space resembles the internal part of the female reproductive system. Lingling O and Dinomog can be made of gold, jade, shell, clay, stone, brass, or copper. In the past, the social status of those who wear this depends on the material used when making it. It is also said that the symbol is associated with the bye-bye letters B and A. Another symbolic meaning of the pendants is the representation of carabao horns. Wearing a dinumog thus signifies that one has butchered numerous carabaos as a ritual offering, according to the Museo Cordillera UP Baguio Ethnographic Museum. Until now, the Ifugao people are still wearing these necklaces, even the young ones. They even use these symbols on earrings. Tourists and foreigners also love these necklaces, so the Ifugaos are selling these jewelers to them. These pieces of jewelry is a symbol of pride and ancestry in the Philippines. Mortar, or as the Ifugaos call it, Lohong. It is made out of carved stone and wood. The Ifugao use it to pound and husk rice that were harvested and sun-dried. In the past, each house usually have one mortar. Now, because of rice milling, only a few use it. The Wano or G-strings is the traditional attire of male Ifugaos. There are six types of Wano, which are used depending on the occasions or the man's social status. These are usually wrapped from behind with the longer piece of cloth dropped down the middle front where the main use of this was to cover and protect the wearer elements. It was also used to distinguish members of the community. The greater the color combinations and the more elaborate the designs, the higher your status was. Also, Ifugao women wear tabis, a wrap around skirt. 
There are about five kinds of skirts. The weaving pattern of the tapis, or tolge, describe the culture and temperament of the wearer's tribe. Traditionally, these skirts were worn by wrapping the cloth around the wearer's waist and holding the ends together with the use of a tightly tied sash. Woven bags are usually made of strong rattan and have braided straps, densely woven. The packs are able to repel rain, keeping their contents dry even during the monsoon season. The straps can also be plated in multiple layers to provide extra padding, making a heavy pack more comfortable and easier to carry.